About four months ago, uh, God visited me in a dream, and he showed me the judgment that's coming, and I was terrified of what I saw. Um, I woke up in a dream, and I was fully coherent, and, and I could think, and I could rationalize, because the first thing I thought in my dream was, where am I? And I stood there, and I stood among a group of people, and it was the largest group of people I've ever seen. It, it was like this well-structured, militaristic row of people, and it went on forever. And a great voice sounded, and it said, divide the sevens from the eights. And there was a great division in the people. And the sevens were put on one side, and the eights were put on another side. And I'm sitting there going, what is going on here? And then Jesus Christ appeared, and these people appeared with him. But I, there was no male or female. There was no race. There was no age. And I started to realize, what's going on here? So I looked around me, and there was no race, no age on anybody there. You, you, they were indistinguishable. But I know that one was a group of sevens, and one was a group of eights. So I see Jesus Christ there, and he passes this mass judgment. And he starts condemning the sevens. And, and I think to myself, what's going on here? Why am I over here with these sevens? So I turn around and I look behind me and there is this person standing there. And I look down and I look on this person's chest. It, it was a he. I, I knew that, but you couldn't tell by looking at it. But I knew it was a he. And it, across his chest it said hate. And I read below that and it said, this man is guilty of hate in the earth. And I started to realize, oh no, God, am I in the wrong line? Oh God, no, no, God. And I looked down at my chest and I also saw writing. <laughs> God then banished the sevens from before his presence. And I ran and I threw myself at the feet of Jesus and I begged him. I said, oh no, please don't do this to me. I, I love you. Please don't throw me away like this. I'll do anything. But at that point in time, I knew it was too late. It, it was way too late. These two beings then grabbed me, and they drug me away from him, and they put me in, in outer darkness. I, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face, and, and all I knew is, oh, God, I'm going to hell. God, God, I don't want to go to hell. I woke up, man, I must have cried for an hour. I was terrified at what I saw. I want to warn you. Jesus sees all of your secret things. That there's nothing that you're hiding. He's going to judge all the secrets. They're written on your chest. He sees them plain as day. You're, you're not hiding anything. All I saw was hate on this man's chest, and I've been repeating day after day, God, if there's hate in my heart that I don't know about, I'm sorry. Forgive me, forgive, forgive any person I've ever been angry with. Your sins are obvious to God. Whether you admit they're sin or not, whether you acknowledge that they're sin or not, God loves a repentant heart this whole, I gave my heart to Jesus once, I'm saved forever, is nonsense, it's not biblical. God says in the book of Ezekiel, in the 18th chapter, that if there's a sinful man that'll walk away from his sin and do that which is right, all of the sin that he's ever done will never be mentioned to him. It's like it's gone. He'll take it even from his own mind. But if there's a righteous man who starts to sin, who has sinned, all of his righteousness will be forgotten and he'll only be remembered for that sin. And if he dies, he'll die for that sin. God lined out a process of forgiveness and it starts with Jesus Christ. He is the judge. We all have these sins in our lives, whether you want to admit them or not, and we battle with them. The Israelites is a nation of people that were just like us that battled with sin. 
there were so few people, God's chosen people, the Israelites, and they all battled with sin. And there was only a small few who had hit it head on. Josiah, all of Israel's turned against God. They want nothing to do with him. They're completely pagan. One man rises up and he reads the book and his heart's torn and he tears his clothes and he tears his beard and he cries out and says, Oh, surely this God, this God is going to destroy us. And a great revival starts in the land. And they break down all of the idols, all of the statues, and the people turn their back on paganism. And there's a great roar heard for God. And then Josiah dies. And everything dies with him. Out of God's chosen people, there's only a handful that are going to be selected in the end. If you have any sin at all, even if you're ignorant that you may think it is a sin, oh God, I'm not sure, it's a sin, get rid of it. If it was holy, you would have known, the Spirit would have visited you. God gave the Israelites a law, and they justified themselves in the law. Look at this, I, I had this in my mind the whole time, but I didn't actually do it, so I'm sin free. God gave us the Holy Spirit. What a higher standard that He challenges our thoughts. He challenges our motivations. Not, not only do we realize that the laws God, God gave was good, but we realize that if it enters our heart, it's sin. Even if you haven't actually done anything, God wants repentance. You want God to work in your life? Quit sinning. You, you want God to move? Repent. God is a father. And what father, when a son or daughter comes to him and says, I'm sorry, I want to make this right with you, will turn him away? What father, when he hears his child humble himself and cry for help, will, will not hear him? God is going to judge sin. And the price for it, you don't want to pay, I don't want to pay. So Jesus Christ gave his life so he wouldn't have to. Your sins are as white as snow in front of him. The whole Bible talks about the great judgment that's coming. And the books will be opened up and the names will be read out of these books. If you have any sin written on your chest and you find yourself with the sevens, repent now while you're here. While you're here while you're here, while you're alive, while you can. Tell him you're sorry. Have, have we become that arrogant we can't say we're sorry? We can't go, you know, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Let, let me do this the right way from now on. After you repent, you have to walk away from it. This is found, the Israelites in Egypt. They escape Egypt, but yet their heart's there the whole time. So bad they want to run back to Egypt and run back to their sin and run back to everything that God is saving them from. Do you have a sin in your life that keeps repeating? Do you have one that just keeps nagging at you that won't leave you alone? That sin is there to drag you down. It wants to destroy you. Jesus Christ will break those chains. There's no other name that can help you. I saw him. He's the one there. He is the good judge. All of the eights in my dream walked into paradise. And, and I stood there and I cried and I cried because I knew there was no other chance. This was it. It was all over. And I deserved it. That's the hardest thing to realize. His, his judgment is right. If you have any sin, confess it. God's quick to forgive. He won't throw it in your face. He won't bring it up. Even those secret sins that you think no one knows about, that you've long forgotten, God will visit those. The Spirit will take those and He'll remind you of it. Repent of those. Repent of all of them. The ones you've long forgotten about, the ones that are coming after you, the ones that want you today, the ones that want you tomorrow. There is no Jesus except in me one time I can just continue to sin. That's not biblical, that's religion. 
The Bible and religion are two different animals. Jesus said, be perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. It's to walk sinless. And before you say, there is no man who doesn't sin, Noah, John the Baptist's parents, Job. Go read again. It says they were perfect. It doesn't mean they hadn't sinned before, but they walked away from it. They said, no, God, you, I love you more than I love this. And they completely walked away. That's who we should strive to be. That's why we know their stories. That's why God makes it so important. He has people write their stories down so that we can look into the lives of these people and see what pleased God. So in ending, I saw the judgment. Jesus' number is eight. I don't know what that means, but I know that the sevens were of this world. And this world ended. And everything that was of this world ended with it. And it was all thrown into hell. I knew standing there, there was going to be a new heaven and a new earth for a new people. And I was rejected. And I'm a man who loves Jesus. But he's exposing me. Let God expose you. He doesn't do it to anybody else. He does it to you. It's so personal. Nobody knows except for him and except for me. Be humble and confess your sin to God. He's quick to forgive.